Hi guys, it's Lynn here and this is vlog number six of rearranging the cacti and succulents in the polytunnel. And um, if you haven't seen the video that I did uh, yesterday, or the day before I should say, um, links up above to that one where I rearranged a lot of them all on here, on the, the left hand side. As you can see, it's all looking pretty good. And um, today I'm going to be putting all of these away here on the floor. I've got some euphorbia, some uh, cloister cacti, some little seedlings, and um, some of the mother of thousands plants, and a few more underneath. Here's some of the crassulas and a few bits and bobs and just a few more outside <coughs> and we've got this table here it's a little bit mouldy but it's all dried up so I'm going to be covering this and then putting some black trays on there not putting anything heavy on there only light plants probably the mother of thousand calanchoes on there and um, that's what we're going to be doing today as you can see all the pots are everywhere that's all going to be rearranged if not today tomorrow and um, the, what we're going to focus on first though is um, this poor plant here this is my Parodia Lenin Gaussii and as I showed you in yesterday's video um, I went to pick it up and it was wobbling at the base and um, when I when I checked it it's rotting as you can clearly see all rotting there some of the pups little babies have all completely rotted so thank goodness there's a lot of fresh plant here so what we're going to be doing is taking it as a cutting and um, I was going to film this but I'm not I'm just going to include a little part of this in the vlog the reason being Hansi uh, my wonderful fiance is going to be I'm um, doing the emergency cutting he's great at saving a lot of the plants we've saved a lot of a lot of ours from the dreaded rot which sometimes happens and we're going to treat this then as a cutting and um, what we're doing if the video Hans is going to be filming it for his channel um, and if the video is done because um, he's so quick at doing the videos um, is done before this vlog the links will be up on the right hand side already um, to the video of Hans showing you how to save this cactus um, and the whole operation um, but if it's not on by this time this vlog is on then it will go on do go over and subscribe to Hans's amazing channel um, family of cactusy and other beauties as I say links above and um, also I'm going to put the links down below as well to subscribe I say Hans is very knowledgeable on cacti and succulents and gardening in general so do go over and support and it's going to he's going to show you the whole filming of how he's going to save this plant fingers crossed we shall be able to save it pretty sure this looks pretty fresh and um, treat it as a cutting but it's sad to see but I say it's gonna be too much to put in this vlog because the vlog's always quite long as it is and to show this is what we've got out here a load of plants that we grow and these all gonna be rearranged as well because it's a little bit of a mess and we're probably going to be getting some um, some garden some hooks here to put on the fence here and um, we're going to then hang some of the epiphyllums and the schlumbergias outside for the summer I'm going to be um, over the next few days potting these into the hanging baskets as I say they're in the pots just placed into these hanging baskets but a lot of them are desperate to be repotted I'm going to be leaving a lot of the ones that are coming into flower um, I see the Ripsalidopsis white buds on there and um, some of the epiphyllums in gorgeous flower here so they're the ones I'm not going to pot repot until they're finished flowering um, but some of the ones that look like they're not going to flower this year you can never really tell with cacti it's touch and go um, I might as well pop these up into the hanging baskets as I say we've got a few hanging baskets there we've got so we're going to be doing that over the next few days but as I say today I'm just going to focus on um, getting everything up off the floor and tidied up and then put away and then we sort of know where we are when everything looks a little bit tidier <laughs> so um, what I'm going to be starting off first we've got a few trays here and as I say, after we've done the emergency operation on the Prodia, then I'm going to start on this back wall here, on this little table here. This is an old mouldy table. I'm going to be buying a new table to replace this, but temporarily this will do um, just till we can get under the table. And we're going to be doing that after we do the after we do the Prodia. So we're going to get um, get going with this poor guy here. He's on the operating table, and let's see what we're faced with. Black as hell. Now is this infected? So I have to clean it up with this isopropanol alcohol. Uh, like that. Take it off because I can't have that 
in the uh, in the flesh either so it had to dry up and try to find a new go well because it's a lovely plant from last year uh, 2017 it flowered and was so beautiful and I, it's very tragic that this happened no new cutting and look I hope for Oh, dear. Mm. oh god, shorter and shorter. Four plants. No, it's a goner. I think it's a complete goner. Such a shame, guys. I've had this for absolutely years. Oh. No, I think that's it, God. I don't think we could cut any more. I think we have to say goodbye to it. No, there's nothing we can be saved, not even any of the babies, I don't think. Um, it'd be wonderful if we could save one of the little pups. They're all rotten too, I think. But you never know, keep our fingers crossed. Oh, 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 oh. I always think if we could save some genetics from the original plant, it's wonderful, guys. Oh, it's no, it's black too. It's Such a shame. Now the good news is we have Hans's wonderful big um, Prodia Leningau as he's had for many many years. This is still going strong. Um, it's got loads of pups and as far as we know it looks healthy enough. No rot at the base. Um, so we're going to be supporting this and finding a good position to put this up in a safe place where it doesn't fall over. But as I say very very sad to see um, See my old um, Leningau is like completely gone to the dogs. I'm just going to show you here. As I say, the full video to this, so Hansi, Hansi trying to save it. Links up above to, to the video there. Please do go over and subscribe to Hansi. It's wonderful. Look at that, guys. Completely gone to the dogs. Um, very sad. Looks all, I don't mean to joke about this, but it's almost like slices of cake, isn't it? Um, all we can say is and we gave it a good life. It had the most remarkable of flowers last year. And as I say rot in cacti can be a silent killer because as you can see here the outside of the plant looks really healthy i mean look at that you would never know um it's only when i picked the plant up and it just wobbled it, and the, one of the pups fell off and that's how it looked um i would never have known so you know shit happens as they say and Hansi, thank you so much for trying oh, to save it my love no, um try, oh it's nothing to do here and um i i believe sometimes they make room for more more plants to to um, take its place and we tried our best and we put it then back into the composter we have a bin here that we use for compost it gets recycled back into nature again mm. and the winters and, uh, in Ireland is not always the best no they're not this it's been a this really a bad winter it, yeah. yeah yeah and it, spring's been a long time coming along so that's that guys and then we're going to carry on now rearranging um, the ones we've got on the floor starting on the back table now guys, we've just noticed one of the pups. I'm just going to go and ask Hansi here, what do you think of this one? Do you think there's any chance? It feels a little Maybe. bit soft, but it's very dehydrated. Yeah. What do yeah. You think, uh, it's... I really don't... Mm, it's difficult to say. I don't know if it's possible. I don't think it is, to be honest. But um, we could keep it and give it a try anyway. And never know. We're, this is the only thing 
possibly could be saved but as you see there it feels hard and it's a bit sort of soft it's very dehydrated i really don't know. i've got nothing to lose i suppose by by keeping it and seeing if we can get anything from it <laughs> but um as i say no chance um at all such so sad um and anyway guys so i'm going to keep this aside because you never know and then i'm going to get to uh, carrying on now i'm just going to give this as I said just now, <laughs> so to repeat myself, guys, give this a good clean and a brush. You know, they're going to put the black trays on here, and they're going to be putting some of the um, the mother of thousand Calanchoe tuby floras. We've got three different varieties onto the shelf here, and then some of the probably the crassulas, and that's going to be um, the next thing I'm going to do now. There you go, guys. That's the three trays put on there, and now I'm going to start putting the um, Calanchoe uh, mother of thousands on. And we have a few few of them down on here. Now, a lot of them are going to need to be repotted, desperate to be repotted. But um, it's just a case of putting them on there for now. As I say, a lot of these are going to be repotted over the coming weeks. But um, at least you'll be able to see what um, what needs to be done when it's in some type of order. So um, here's Hansi. Uh, he. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start putting the... Um, the mother of thousands on and obviously start with the tallest first at the back now hans is um repotting our beautiful clerodendron thombosii look at the root system on that guys what amazing and we love our john in his uh, compost there he is a beauty he's uh, just come out of flowering so it's always a good time uh, yeah. after they've been flowering to repot yeah. and uh isn't it gorgeous next Honestly. size pot up <laughs> So Hans is, we're good teamwork, me and Hans. I get the rearrange while Hans does all the repotting. <laughs> I'll just show you what we've done so far. Now, um, obviously, the Mother of Thousands, um, Calanchoes, uh, the different varieties we've got on here. Now, it looks a bit of a mess because a lot of them, they do tend to grow very sort of lanky when they're not um, sort of tied up with a bit of a pole. So, as I say, a lot of these were young little ones we grew from tiny, tiny little plantlets, the size of that little thing at the end there <laughs> and um, look at them now so they're going to be um, repotted into the next size up probably these sizes and I'm going to be putting a little pole just to tie them up so to stop them because they tend to grow very very lanky as you can see we have to have them supported as here with the bamboo so um, and on there but I'm going to be potting these in the next few days so I've made sure I've left lots of space around so when they're in the next size pot there's room for them to go back in again and um, stay tuned for a video when I repot these mother of thousands. We have three different types. Now this one here is the common one, the Calanchoe de Gremontiana, which is the most commonly seen one. And we have some of the little babies here. This one has the little babies growing all around the edges, sort of like the um, long wide leaves and it usually has a little bit of underneath, almost like a bit of a sort of a snake skinny effect underneath there. Uh, this is the original mother plant they've had many years um, and um, it's produced lots of babies and these are some of the babies here <laughs> and then we have the Calanchoe um, mother of thousands tubiflora which is this one here tubiflora because um, actually it, because of the leaves are very tubular but it's actually down to the tubular like flowers and um, again this is completely different shaped leaves to this but it has its little babies growing on the very edges rather than around the edges of the whole leaf it just literally has them grown on the tips as you can see there just on the tips um, rather than the edges so a bit different to this one and then um, we have another mother of thousands Calanchoe that our wonderful friend Olga from Olga's Dreamland gifted to us um, and if you're not familiar with Olga then you must go over and subscribe to her amazing amazing cacti and succulent and plant channel she's a wonderful friend of ours and um, very dear to us um, she lives in Greece lucky Olga <laughs> with her beautiful beautiful dog uh, Phoebe and she has some amazing videos on there so please do go over and subscribe and she gives us this Calanchoe now this is a Degra Montiana and it's a cross with another one I did actually write it down I don't know if I got it there um, let's see if I did um... no it's a De Degra Montiana but it's crossed with another one um, I think it's a tuby floor cross with a Degra Montiana as you can see this is a cross between the two it has wider leaves 
than the tubi flora but not as wide as the normal normal um, mother of thousands as you can see there it's a different one again and um, it has the little babies growing around so we have three different types all wonderful and as it looks a bit of a mess here because they do grow a little bit lanky when they're not staked so I say stay tuned when we we're going to be repotting these and they've got lots more room on the tray now so I'm going to see what we've got left to put on there may put some of the um, crassulas that we have down on the floor here and so the table can't take too much weight so making sure these aren't the heavy ones we've just got some of these left and a couple of the euphorbias here oh wow Hansi he's amazing that looks so much better potted up in a bigger pot look at that isn't that a beautiful plant guys also give it a good wet even with the uh, fertilizer because this soil is just uh, for seedlings yeah so you, need a, poof, you see it's very light green it shall be dark green yeah like this one. beautiful because it's uh, have, uh, not enough for fertilizer so it's poor guy <laughs> it's a uh, it's big need of oh. ferrum <laughs> we yes. normally use uh, John in his compost know, number know. two, but we ran out, so we're using the John in Seto. But it's, it's compost is pretty much the same mixture, just the one, two, and the three have different rates of fertilizer yes, in. So, to, to catch the, the bags, yeah, bags on the bus. oh, yes, exactly. So, we just make sure because we're using the seed zone, we use extra fertilizer instead. Um, and I just have to show you guys Johansi's dreads. <laughs> I know this is nothing to do with gardening, but I have to say, don't you think he's just the most amazing dreads, dreadlocks you have ever seen in your life? And they're all his own. He's been growing them for 10 years. Um, they're incredible, guys. Stand up, Hansi, um, when you finish that, and just to show how long it really is. Right. It's not here, so. uh, it's oh. normally down to there, because Hansi's got it tied up because he's gardening. <laughs> but look at that. Aren't they beautiful, guys? They're amazing. <laughs> Oh, they are beautiful. I couldn't be able to get my hair that long. I've got long hair, but it doesn't grow much longer than this. <laughs> so um, anyway, sorry to be totally random off topic. <laughs> um, back to um, Calanchoes are done. The tubifloras. Now we're going to start on a couple of Calanchoes under the table and then the euphorbias. But there you go, guys. That's all the Calanchoe um, varieties put together here as I say the uh, mother of a thousand varieties all at the, at the back and this is another form this is actually a Kalanchoe I have got the label somewhere yeah I've got it on this one um, Kalanchoe Marnuriana and this actual plant here was gifted to us as some cuttings from the guy who actually works at the uh, the Belfast Botanic Gardens. I was admiring its flowers and he gave me some cuttings. He was trimming it down, which is very, very kind of him. So thank you for that. And um, it is doing really well. Now, what's amazing about this, uh, Kalanchoes, this Kalanchoe anyway, same as the Mother of Thousands, belong to the, um, the Bryophyllum family, which means they produce little plantlets around the edges, as I said with the Mother of Thousands. Now, what's interesting about this plant is it doesn't produce plantlets around the edges if it's just left alone, but if the leaf gets damaged or the leaf falls off, this produces plantlets around the leaves and it forms into a new little plant. As you can see, these are all leaves that, that fell off and they just started forming little plantlets around, as, as all succulents type of do, but this actually goes around the edges and then forms into a new little plant. Well, if the leaf gets damaged, it forms into a little plant, which is quite interesting, unlike the mother of thousands that just forms the plantlets anyway. So that's, that's just an interesting thing. Now, loads of space left here on the trays. Now, I was going to put this Kalanchoe here. This is gorgeous. It needs a bit of a pruning, but because it's in flower, look at the lovely little little flowers here. I thought it's best to leave it till it stops flowering before getting a bit of a pruning. But I did put it onto the tray, but I think I'm going to put it into a hanging, got, got the hanging baskets here. Put it into a hanging basket and actually hang it up because there's plenty of room for the hanging baskets here. And I think that's going to look more tidier hanging from a hanging basket than if I put it onto the trays. So I think what I'm going to be doing now is with the trays here, as I say, this table, until I get that replaced, I can't put anything heavy on there. So I think the next best thing I can put is probably some of the, the seedlings that we've got down here. These are all what we've grown from seed. Um, here we've got a few different types of cactus we grew from seed. These are um, Trigoceros pachanois that we've been growing from seed. And this one is one we actually got from our wonderful friend Jake. So hi Jake, if you're watching this, um, this is a larger Trigoceros pachanois that I think he grew himself from seed, from his own plant. So these are from ours. And this is from here.
his. So that's very exciting. And um, these are going to be potting on into bigger pots. Obviously, these little seedlings. But for now, they're staying there and then going up onto the table. And we've got some more Cloister Cactus Jujiensis and some little Ripsali seedlings that got in there somehow. But they're going at the back as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing now is putting the, putting the seedlings on the trays. Now that's all that table done there. I've got the um, Calanchoes and some seedlings of Mammillaria, Trichocereus, Corypantha and Lobivia here. As I say, I've left plenty of space on the trays because these are going to be um, potting up into their own little individual pots in the coming weeks. These are going to be potted on. These Mammillaras be okay there for a little bit longer. They are sort of getting into each other, so I'm going to have to separate them, pot them into a, a bigger seed tray. These will be potted up individually. These will be potted up individually. So stay tuned for future videos when I do that in the next few weeks. And as I say, all the Kalanchoes here, mother of are going to be repotted. So I've left space for the next size of pots so um, they're not crammed together. And then when it goes to repot them, there's nowhere to put them. So I've left plenty of space there. Now the next job here, I've got this plant stand here. And what I'm going to be doing is giving this a bit of a clean here, brush and pan it and then this is going to be pushed in the corner and um, putting some more plants on here. As I said we've got plenty of room, all the only plants we've got left now is um, a couple of the cloister cacti and I think I'm going to put them in hanging baskets. They might be better but they can go on here in the meantime and um, some of the um, euphorbias, now these are large and heavy so they're not going to really fit under there but I've got some little stalls here, these are great, these are what I've picked up in charity shops over the years, they're brilliant to put plants on and um, they'd be great to probably to be put in on there, I'm not quite sure but we'll work it out and um, here are some of the crassulas, so we'll see what we've got, they might be better off actually sort of being on the little footstools and we've got plenty of space on here anyway which is great I'm going to be rearranging this this little wrought iron plant stand which um which is lovely there's some age to this and um, they, I think what I'm going to be doing with the we've got some chlorophytum spider plants and we've got some in the plant rooms in the house so I may pot them up all together into hanging baskets and I may possibly um, keep them in here maybe um, because it will leave a bit more bit more space on the plant stand but as I say we've got loads of space anyway so I'm going to be rearranging all this next so the next job is I'm going to clean um, here and put this stand there now that's a little plant stand up here but as we've got loads of room and um, what I'm going to be doing is probably using these three um, three little <coughs> Uh, tables here just to store plant stuff on like plant sprays and gonna get a little brush and pan for in here and things like that as you can see everything's a bit of a mess underneath um, all here so probably have a bit of a tidy up and maybe put it put it on here not quite sure what, what we're gonna do but it's gonna be a handy little handy little table as I say um, okay with the plant is this beautiful rip salidopsis is gonna be put into its little hanging basket on its own um, but because it's in bud never repot when things are in bud guys because it's more likely to drop its buds as i say in here these are all the rare bootiers the camisarius um plants and these are going to be put onto the stand with our other camisarius there's another rare bootiers and the most important thing is because a lot of these are in bud at the moment look at the buds on this one guys and um, the rare bootier um, this has the most beautiful beautiful little beautiful little flowers on it um, pinky flowers um, it's important that when you do move plants if you have to as in this case we have to um, it's important that you keep them in the flowers and the plant facing in exactly the same direction because if I was very booties aren't too bad you can sort of move them back without them dropping the flowers but it's too much of a risk um, in this case I'm going to keep them in the same direction and put them onto the stand onto the stand here I think these ones are going to again these are all in bud here these Camisarius Camo Libivia hybrids probably going to be put in onto this one here and then put the smaller ones on here so I'm going to be doing the plant stand next that's my next job there you go guys that's the um, wrought iron plant stand all sorted out and um, I have um, the a mixture of Camisarius, Camo Libivia and Ray Bootia all on here now the top one I have um, a cloister cactus Candeliana and um, this I may possibly put into a hanging basket in the coming weeks it sort of fits quite nice up there it gives the stand a little bit of stability because when the wind gets in it is a little bit wobbly I don't want anything blowing off and um, plenty of space for it to grow there and hang down so um, that looks good up there and then I've got the the Camelobivius 
and the Camisarius, all hybrids here. A couple of the Ray Bootiers here and um, the Ray Bootier Albi Pelosa. I'm going to be repotting this one in the next uh, few days, so stay tuned for a video of that one. This one has the most remarkable orange flowers on it and it hasn't if you haven't seen what the flowers look like on this plant you have to just it's breathtaking links up above to a video i've made when this was in flower it usually flowers every year it didn't flower last year which was disappointing it hasn't flowered this year and the reason being i found out that last year it came down with a very bad case of spider mite as you can see there all the browning at the tips luckily this year this is all the new growth all fresh green growth bursting out of the dry scabbed skin so that's a really good sign but as I say because it's still recovering from the spider mite um, I'm going to be repotting this and um, probably won't flower now until next year but um, it's quite a remarkable plant in itself it's lovely and furry it's like a teddy bear one of the nice safe cacti and it's very precious so um, that obviously needs to be repotted on and then these are all the cabbages, all loads of buds on these, all coming into buds, that's exciting. Now they've got the smaller ones down here, again, Camoserius, Camolobivia, um, and Rebutia, all hybrids here. A lot of them are coming into flowers, so I made sure that I didn't turn the direction of them. I put them in the same direction when it comes to flowers. This little beauty here, this is Rebutia Helios, Albipiflosa. Albi it's never had so many buds on it, so that's really exciting. These have overwintered very well in the polytunnel, and they've never have seen so many in buds, so it's remarkable now these guys is the good news um a few weeks ago i made a video of my one in fact it was the very first cactus i ever had when i was about 12 years old and this is it now um, it grew into an amazing plant with amazing flowers sadly last year it came down with very bad uh, spider mite uh, well no sorry not spider mite i'm talking about it very bad um mealybug and it was the type of mealybug i've recently encountered there's a very tiny tiny little very small mealybug not like the normal ones that are quite large and pink when you squeeze them this was a very tiny tiny mealy and um they're sort of green when you squeeze them they're quite weird they're, but they're very invasive and they burrow right into the plant unlike the other ones that tend to just suck on the outside they're dreadful and they really took this plant alive and have managed to save a lot of the stems and I'm pleased to say it's making a remarkable recovery which I'm very pleased with. as you can see there's buds forming there lots of buds on here <coughs> so I'm very pleased about that another one there another one down there as well there's another bud right there and um, this as well is a different one again. Um, it looks similar, but it's the longer, longer spined variety. So um, that's also doing well. No size, oh, there is size of buds, just spotted one there. That's good news. So they, this is very good news that see that in bud as well. And uh, that's good, so there you go. And um, the bottom is sort of free. Now I've got some of the chlorophytums there. I may put um, the all green one maybe at the bottom there because they don't need to have such bright light as cacti and succulents do and as I say I've got some more camisaris upstairs in the plant rooms that I'll probably put into hanging baskets because they they've got so many of them they look nice put all together but that's the plant stand done so um, so far so good it's a uh, looking good in here now um, all I have left to do oh yes I must let you know guys we put the um, Hans's Parodia Leningausii, as you know, mine has gone to the rot, sadly. But this is Hans's he's had for absolutely years, I think about 25 years or so. And it's remarkable. Look at all the pups on it. Now it needs a bit of, it fell out the pot and lost a bit of soil, but it's pretty much okay. Just got to top that up with the soil there. And um, we've tied it up then very loosely onto um, one of the patches there is pringly eyes for support. And obviously this so it doesn't get spined and tied it up loosely so it doesn't blow off or blow down. And uh, that's what we've done there. As I say, what we've got left with now is just the euphorbias down here. It's just three fairly, not particularly large, but they're quite heavy euphorbias. And as I say, this um, um, Chrysocactum material is going to be going into a hanging basket, so it's going to stay there for now. And that's pretty much it. That's really all we've got left. And just the crassulas. Um, here are the crassula jade plants. So because they're quite sort of heavy and large and we have got loads of space around, um, we've got loads of these little plant tables here. So what I'm going to be doing now is probably giving the whole polytunnel a bit of a brush and pan down. As I say, I'm going to be sorting all the pots and saucers and everything out tomorrow because they forecast rain so it'd be a good good day to probably do get that sorted out and i'm going to carry on with the plants and be determined to get this finished today guys so um, all the plants are done in here then all i have to do then for tomorrow's vlog is sorting out all the pots and saucers
Now guys, as I said, Hans is busy repotting and this gorgeous little Mammy Laria here is one I grew from seed, one single seed from the fruit of the Mammillaria spinosima red-headed Irishman, which is this one here. Just one little seed and I just put it into the pot and, it, and look at that. It, and that's probably about two years old now. Isn't it just adorable? And look at its roots. It's incredible. Fantastic. Gorgeous, and that's its mummy there. I'm so impressed on <laughs> Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> and uh, my little cacti queen. Ah, uh, <laughs> Hansi. Now I've got the three little stools here. Um, as I say, these three little stools were bargain that I got from a charity shop years ago. And um, I've got the little one. He's going to put the um, the crassula here on the three three jade plants. Little, little one on here and the medium one on there and the other one almost like the three bears isn't it <laughs> i just need goldilocks now <laughs> there you go that's the three jade plants on their little stools they look lovely there and um, i've got the two big epiphyllum akamani eyes here that i think i'm going to be putting out into the yard because they can take plenty of rain um, so I haven't got to worry about the rain with these and the fresh air will do them good. I usually put this big one out usually in the summer every year outside. And this one here is some cuttings that was gifted to us by um, some friends at our local cactus meeting in Belfast. And as you can see here, there's a lovely big juicy seed pod that is perfectly ready to be pulled off and harvested so you'll always know when it's ready to pick an epiphyllum fruit as with any cactus fruit it will feel soft to the touch as you can see there it's already starting to to go bad so this is well over ripe I just haven't had time to to really harvest it yet but it's ready now so you'll always know because it should feel soft to touch all you need to do is twist it like that it should come away very easy like that all cactus fruit is edible um, because I've had to treat this particular plant in the, the past with um, insecticides I'm not actually going to be eating this <laughs> I'm going to be harvesting the fruit now it does need to be harvested pretty much straight away so I'm going to be tomorrow I'm going to be cutting this up and um, taking the seed out and laying um, the seed out onto a paper tissue to dry it and harvest the seed so um, I've actually made a few videos on how to harvest cactus fruit and I'll be making a video when I harvest this fruit tomorrow so stay tuned for that in the next couple of days or so but um, in the meantime I'm going to take this into the house now and um, get it ready probably, probably put it in a cool spot to harvest tomorrow and um, show you how to get seed from it and um, these two I'm going to be putting outside as I say now that's that um, one of the euphorbias here on the table as I say the other three um, jades have been put away but what's bizarre guys I was just putting up the little table there for the other euphorbia we have now some of you may have remembered that a few weeks ago we had um, this <laughs> euphorbia um, had a strange sort of arm come on it like almost like a skeleton arm where it's all come away and it's done the same thing again this has literally happened overnight guys so Hans is going to be cutting this now and um, going to show you um, well we've already made a video where we actually cut the arm off it so um, but I'll include a little bit into this vlog sorry about this vlog it's going to go on for a long time guys um, it's taken us a bit longer than we thought but the weather's absolutely beautiful as you can see there so I'm um, determined to get everything done and uh, put away now Hans is going to go and cut the arm off this <laughs> and um, as I say it's really weird because it's twice it's done this, this plant. Strange. <laughs> it's weird isn't it? But it's in, in full uh, growing here. Yeah it seems... Look, look there for example there, a new new thorns and... Uh, yeah, lovely yeah, new um, New leaves, no, up. thorns. Thorns, yeah. <laughs> thorns, uh, euphorbias yeah. are suckers, they don't have uh, spines, they have no. thorns. Yeah. And new leaves, beautiful leaves. Yeah, so it's healthy enough. Yeah. It just so seems it's to be no dying back. no problem with it, but strange. I didn't saw this yesterday. No, we definitely but was boom. not yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> it's happened like a bomb. <laughs> it's just happened, doesn't and it? And here so. I have this cute little, little pink shower bottle. <laughs> if it's bleeding, <clears throat> so we can spray it. So yeah, because euphorbias give off a, a milky sap, so yeah. it's always good to... Um, so we try our best. Yay. So it's good to include all this yeah. in the vlog because uh ha -ha. well bit, done yeah. Hansi. yeah a little bit of, of uh yeah. white milky sap so you forbes have to be careful that yeah. you don't uh touch your eyes because it can um can be very irritating and on the skin so um always spray with a bit of water mm -hmm. to um, so, 
stop it yeah. from bleeding. You see, yeah, stop direct. Ah, oh, brilliant, That's my cool. love. You're great. Now we can put this one away. <laughs> That's great. Shall we try no. to prune it? No. <laughs> what shall do we, we do try, with it? Uh, shall we try to to to? No. <laughs> it's a bad cutting. Yeah. I think it's so. a bad cutting. <laughs> I think it's a goner. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's the euphorbias put away and the um, the jades all nice on their little stalls and the, the group polytunnel is practically all done I have to say we've got some of the taller ones we just put a little bit here because they're they're best kept indoors rather than outside and as I say that very very tall trica serious there is one that Hans grew himself from seed nearly 44 years ago now uh, isn't it remarkable and he's cut it back a few times at the base when he's moved house so it would have been a three times the size normally and as I say I'm going to be working my way repotting a lot of the hanging baskets over the next few days now um, these two here are going to go into hanging baskets so that's why they're there I'm going to be doing that probably tomorrow and the next day and also the um, the dragon fruit there is going to be hung up now what I've done with the epiphyllums here um, the two big ones I've got out in the yard because they get maximum light there and I've kept them in exactly the same direction there was in the polytunnel um, obviously because as you can see they're coming into flower which is really really good news and I don't want the flower buds to drop off and um, we've got all the other epiphyllums here a lot of these all coming into flower but as I say I'm going to be repotting them after they've stopped flowering because I don't want the buds to drop off the ones that aren't haven't got any buds on I will um, repot and that's pretty much it for today because I'm exhausted I mean Hans you're going to have um, a nice bowl of um, vegetables and probably some baked potato and uh, that'll be us for tonight <laughs> and um, Saturday night, a lovely, lovely evening. And as you can see there, this is all of the pots, all of the trays, um, hanging baskets there. This needs to be completely sorted out. So tomorrow, um, I'm going to be in the polytunnel getting all of this sorted, all in size order. I love to have everything orderly, <laughs> all the pots in the right size. And uh, it's much easier than when it goes to repotting. As you can see, we've got all this space under the tables, which is really great. So we've got loads of room to tidy up and a little bit under here as well. We're going to get tidied. And here, this is just um, a bowl where everything that falls off the plants, we just put in there. And these are all cuttings that we're going to um, sort of pot up as well. And also for giveaways um, to family and friends. And here again, these are all little like every time we have a little succulent leaf fall off, we just put it into this little bowl. And as you can see there, start to form roots and then we pot them up. But that's going to be sorted out tomorrow. So that's under the table. And here we've, uh, Hansi just sowed some date seeds from, we love to eat dates. And he's sowing some seeds there so fingers crossed they should take they should take uh, root and germinate and as I say tomorrow's job is just sorting out all of the the trays so Hansi what do you think of the polytunnel my love I have never seen a better one haha <laughs> it's never yeah, looks so good this is top notch for me it really is isn't and it my levels so I'm so happy uh, that you have done some much with it so ah uh, mm. we've not had chance place, yeah. since we moved in september we just had to get the plants under cover we and it was obviously coming to the winter we had not chance to do nothing it's the first time we've been able to put everything in order and roughly in genus order as well it's much easier when it comes to caring for them and look at all the flowers and easy to see all the yeah it's more aesthetically pleasing as well because when we take people into to view everything it looks far nicer than when it was just like a jungle and as I say we have um, have our plants the big tall ones all out here in the yard they can take a lot of rain and um, it's been pretty dry here in Ireland the past past couple of weeks we're not complaining the weather's been fantastic but obviously when the rain does start up we're gonna make sure we put cover all up with some probably clear plastic um, covering on the base around the plants just to stop excess rain but they're complete the trichocereus and the like here can take pretty much a lot of rain during the summer as well and the wheeling here is going to be potting that up too so um all well and um that's the end of vlog number five as a vlog number six <laughs> will be um tomorrow yeah blog number number five that's right the blog number six <laughs> um we'll be carrying on with um the next blog tomorrow i'm gonna be sorting out all of these these pots and i'm um, probably doing a couple of the hanging baskets if i get a chance so guys me and hansi want to send you thanks so much for watching by the way and all your amazing comments and support 
and um, it's wonderful to share our passion for growing cacti and succulents and plants in general with everybody worldwide. <laughs> so guys, when well, I said you loads of love, heaps, heaps of, of happiness, happiness and, and tons and tons, tons of, of plant power. power. As, As always, always from, from Ireland. Ireland. Till the next video guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.